I didn't hear you. You've done enough to damage that business. Let's get on the way. I've done enough damage to what business? All these. Damage to them? Yeah, what are you doing for? What are you talking about? I'm making a travel video about your town. Well, okay, all right. Damage to the business. What would make you think of that? Well, I know, but I can't You're see. a young man. Don't be so angry. Yeah, good. No, sir, I'm just trying. I'm trying town. to lighten up the mood here. I'm trying to protect our town. Okay, from I've what? I've lived here for 60 years. Okay, so you want to promote it? Yeah, I do, but I don't, how do I know that? Well, you ask the question. Well, the people are walking around you because of you. People don't want to be in the video, so That's they why. walk around and I don't bother so, them. So why? So why do you do it? So if a couple of people might not want to be in the video. I shouldn't be out here taking video. Okay, it's up to you. No, I really want to understand Take where you're coming from. No, it's get a, a life. Get a life. All right. Well. This is, this is what a cantankerous old man looks like. Don't become one. No, we don't. Real good. Another one that doesn't like tourism? Now, notice uh, Jason Gutter Trash engaged this guy first. How you doing? And he says, oh, good. You know? Um, and he says, oh, I don't ever bother people. He's a liar. You want a business here? Did I talk to you? Did I say anything to you? Yeah, you just no. Walked don't right. assume anything, dude. Don't start, yelling at, so don't start yelling at me, man. Have a good day. You started it. Uh, did I? Yeah, you yeah, did. See, toodaloo, yes, man. Yes, you did. Toodaloo, man. See you later. Toodaloo, dude. Adios. Toodaloo. Off you go. Carry Adios. on. Off you go. Bye-bye. See you later. Have another. Bye-bye. Keep going. Tell you what. Off you go. Where am I going? You're going wherever Why you're you going. Why are you acting so indignant? What, are you some kind of jerk? Yeah, have you looked in the mirror lately? No, you're the jerk. Am I? Yeah, you are. I'm the indignant jerk. Yes, you are. You need to touch reality. I didn't even reality. say a word to you. You need to touch reality, bro. You really do. Bro, you like fighting with people. I can see that. Not at all. Later. Yeah. Adios. Bye-bye. Okay, uh, Jason Gutter Trash. Uh, he's always looking for a fight. Notice he is um, carrying pepper spray and a gun. He always carries pepper spray and a gun. And he deploys pepper spray. He is looking for a fight, but he's doing more than looking for a fight. He's looking for a kill. Yeah. He is looking for a reason to use the gun. Now, he can deploy the pepper spray and uh, not a problem, but um, doesn't care who else gets hit. But the fact is, Jason Gutter Trash is looking for a kill. He's looking for an excuse to use the gun, and he will. You cannot engage with him. Okay, well, you got two choices. Number one, um, I don't recommend you do what this guy did. This is kind of half-assed. Look, you got the left side of the road, you got the right side of the road. Okay, walk down either side. But if you walk down the middle, you're going to get hit by a car. I would try to stay away from this guy. If he says hello, you don't answer him. You don't, you know, you don't acknowledge him. He's going to say it's your fault. The police can do nothing. The courts are going to say it's minor, and they're going to back him up. People back up Jason Gutter Trash. He is a millionaire, a multi-millionaire off of this YouTube thing. Yeah. And people support him. He's got lots and lots of subscribers. That doesn't do you any good, though, if you have a confrontation with him. So, one thing is, you're going to have to completely ignore him and just... Go with it and just move on, if you can. Now, the other choice that's legit is you're going to have to go all the way. And I mean, you don't stop at nothing. And you recognize that you are in the jungle. And you fight like your life depends on it, because it does. He has a gun and there's two of them. Now, if you do anything in the middle, like a little fist of cuffs or an argument or a banter, you, you're going to lose, okay? Now, the thing is, if you were to go all the way, like in uh, beast mode in the jungle, fight for your life and do what you got to do, uh, you would get in less trouble than if you did something in between. You would have a, I'd say you'd have a very good chance of um, coming out okay, uh, you're not going to come out okay if you go in the middle. So I would recommend trying to avoid them and, you know, ignore them and just move on if you can. If he does not leave you that option, then you got to go the complete other end of the spectrum. And that's my humble opinion, which I'm entitled to. So, obviously, you have a dock worker right there, 
in the black and his job is to clear the dock for the dinner boat to be able to dock because you see what's going on um you have this big walkway right here and of course when the boat docks they're going to take that walkway and go back up on shore. All right. You know, I'm from Virginia Beach. I've seen plenty of boats like this. Uh, the Spirit of Norfolk, the ferry out there, it's, it's all the same. That's what it is. It's for large crowds to be able to get back on shore. It's very simple. So when some random guys park their pontoon boat right there, that's not what it's for. Now, apparently, people that are responsible for the pontoon boat, they are rolling up on the guy like, hey, you can't untie our boat. That's our boat. What are you doing? All this and that. And of course, when guys are on the water, shirts off, you know, trying to party or whatever, a lot of times they've been drinking. So you may have some drunk guys running up on this person, not understanding that they are in the wrong 100%. Or maybe they do know they're in the wrong and they don't care. And you see some of the crew on looking right there. My main man right here is going to come into effect a little bit later. Y'all just hang tight for that. Okay, Jason Gutter Trash is in the wrong. He knows he's in the wrong. Uh, people are stupid, and they happen to believe in him, and uh, they believe him. Now, he knows damn good and well he's wrong. But he probably has another angle which he's not sharing. But people, they they like the guy. And people always tell me, well, look, he's got lots of subscribers, therefore he's correct. Yeah, that's the way people think. People are stupid. Okay, I'm going to kind of skip ahead a little bit. You see people on the, on the boat observing, right? And just seeing what's going on and just seeing the argument and you see him right here pointing at the boat it's like look they got to be able to park and your boat's in the way that's what's going on it's pretty simple all right now you're trying to tell them go somewhere else it's like no we gotta dock the boat right here that's what we always do it there's a walkway there's a lot of people on board they're gonna dock right here your little pontoon boats in the way get it out the way and if you don't want to get it out the way, I'm going to get it out the way. And that's why you untied it. And I think when he untied it, it might have kind of floated a little bit. Maybe it collided with some other boats. I'm not really sure what's going on. But now there's a heated argument. You can kind of see all the body language and what's happening. There's a whole lot going on there. And then, of course, you get people egg in the morning. I'm going to turn the sound on a little bit so you can hear what's going on. kind of hear what's going on there's a little bit of commotion because they see what's happening on the on the boat right and um you're gonna see this escalate really quickly all right you, you see my man right here there's some back and forth with the people that are responsible for the boat there's a lot of back and forth commotion and you're gonna see it escalate see there's a little skip right there you're gonna kind of see it go forward really quick and go from zero to 100 very very quick all because they did not want to move their pontoon boat. All right. Now, all this talking going on, it shouldn't even be happening. They should have just moved the boat. Like Now, uh, one thing he said is that the uh, incident escalates real quickly from zero to 100. Now, in police training, they always taught us that uh, situations escalate gradually. Uh, that's bullshit. And if you'll notice, um, the people that taught the class were never road deputies. Yeah, they'd never been on the road. Uh, they'd never been anywhere. They'd always been like, um, let's say, lieutenants or somebody that started out as lieutenants their first day of the job and never, ever went to a police academy. Uh, they put out a lot of misinformation, which is confusing. And it could cause you bodily injury, too, if not your life. Was requested. All right. And now these guys, they, they're kind of heated. They're upset. Um, you're going to see a little bit more of that. And in just one moment, you're going to see a guy come clear out of the frame from the uh, left-hand side right here. He's going to come from out of the frame and attack my man in the white shirt. And again, my man right here is a dock worker. He's simply doing his job to clear the dock for the dinner boat, the party boat, to be able to dock. And you see the body language. They're not really understanding what's going on. <laughs> see, and there, there we go. See? A man and you see the hat flop like that I think the reason why that happened is because I got to send the signal he's probably been in this same scenario before maybe not the exact same scenario of black pontoon boat drunk white guys or whatever but people are gonna be on the boat they're gonna be drinking they might get a little bit uh, uh, testy a little bit violent 
So when the hat goes up, that's like a bad signal. Hey, y'all, please come help. Right? So so now they're fighting. And this turns out to be a big brawl, of course. Uh, here's our problem. You know, um, this is what we're we working for. Start. I'm sure she'll be here. Great. We First have management. All, I have to let you know that we are not a designated confidential resource here on campus. I mean, yeah, so we have to work for crap like this, up. you know? I'm sure she'll be here. But what we're doing is we're working for people, management, who doesn't care. This is the type of management we're working for. This is what the police are working for. This is our city council. This is what we've got that's not backing us up. So if you have a problem with these frauditors, uh, calling the police isn't going to work. That is not an option. Even if the police wanted to help us, they couldn't. I mean, first of all, they can't. And if they wanted to, they can't. If Carpenter intended they live to be a ballistic missile lobbed at AT's materialism and excess, he's never been shy about who he saw as the ultimate symbol of that excess, President Ronald Reagan. Speaking of Starlog around the time of the film's release, Carpenter was clear on this point, calling the president and his cabinet a bunch of crooks. In the years since, Carpenter has been happy to elaborate on his contempt for Reagan whenever given the opportunity. And uh, as he should be, yeah. Uh, Reagan was the tipping point of our economy. We had a very good economy, the best in the world. And we went from the world's biggest creditor to the world's biggest debtor in his second term. So, yeah, he completely ruined the economy. Not for the rich, not for the super rich, but for all of us. And, yeah, you listening to this, you're not part of the super rich. Yeah, they got a club and you're not in it. They can either believe it or they cannot believe it. I don't give two f but I am telling you right now, that m that m back there is not real. Okay, um, this was that incident of that crazy lady on the plane. Uh, she did not get arrested. Nothing happened to her. Uh, let's look at why. Um, if you did what she did, you would be in jail. And you would do time, okay? Um... First of all, she's very good looking, and she's physically fit. She's extremely rich. She lives in a $2 million house, okay? And she's been flashing the signs of Baphomet. Yeah, it's pronounced Baphomet. The T is silent. Uh, most people say Baphomet. But, uh, yeah, she's connected, all right? Uh, which is probably why she's got the money she's got, okay? I don't know the full deal, but... Um, She's privileged. You're not. Okay? Uh, Amagansett Press is privileged. Don't know why. Don't know how. But you're not. Oh, and by the way, it's the star of Mendes or the head of Mendes. People say Mendes, but it's actually pronounced Mendes. Okay, so if you're connected and you're rich, you can. the laws don't apply the same. Okay, uh, the thing is, um, as regular people, if you come across these frauditors, um, you have to either go zero or a hundred. And if you go a hundred, you got to go all the way and go like your life depends on it because it does. Okay, but anything in between is, uh, well, unacceptable. 